Hey cousins, welcome to Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. Welcome cousins to this episode of Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. I'm your host Cornell Wright, the people's lobbyist, and today we're going to talk about the American Rescue Plan. Now, cousin, a couple of weeks ago, Congress voted for the American Rescue Plan, a $1.9 trillion plan in order to infuse, give, inject, whatever words you want to use, money into the economy for the benefit of cousins. And when I say benefit of the cousins, if you remember last year about this time, there was another stimulus package that came in about $1.9 trillion as well. And that one, in my opinion, if you go back and look at it, I think you'll agree with me, had a lot of money associated with that going toward businesses. Yes, I understand that cousins did get some checks, like $1,400 or whatever, as I recall, maybe off on the number. And there was some extension to unemployment, yeah. But guess what, cousins? That money and that program ran out in the middle of last year, right? And so if I understand, and you know, check me on this to make sure I'm right, there was a Democratic House of Representatives, there was a Senate-dominated Senate, okay, by Republicans, the House of Representatives presented a new bill to the Senate in order to help cousins get through the end of 2020, and what happened? Nothing. It happened multiple times, going back and forth. Here was a plan, here was a bill. And in fact, if I recall, and you helped me check out the numbers, the, the Democratic plan coming from the House of Representatives had like a thousand plus dollars going to everybody. The Senate said, oh, it should ought to be $300. Okay? So, all of a sudden we have an election in November, okay, in which the Democrats and President Joe Biden are now the president. The, in the Congress, it's very close in regards to the Senate, it's almost equal, 50-50, and the House of Representatives is a small margin, right? And then so what happens? They present then the bill back called the American Rescue Plan, which has a number of aspects to it that I think makes sense to the benefit of who? Cousins here in the United States of America. One of those benefits, and some of you cousins will be receiving very shortly, as I understand, or maybe already have received, is $1,400 for those with Social Security numbers. There was actually a senator who made comments on the Senate floor saying that, oh, this money was going to be going to illegal aliens and all sorts of criminals and that sort of thing. And it turns out he was corrected immediately by another Senate senator saying, no, only people with social security numbers are getting the money. Cousins, was that misinformation? Are we to believe that the Senate senator didn't know that information? Or as we've talked about in other programs, was he just lying? The fact of the matter is, cousins, is that the folks getting the $1,400 have to have a social security number, which means they're paying in the Social Security Administration, they're paying their taxes. What more do we want? <laughs> Please. So cousins, here's the point. No Republicans voted for the bill. Zero. Now, I don't understand high-level politics. I've run for a political office in the past, twice, <laughs> lost, okay, as a Republican, by the way. But so as it turns out, zero of the Republicans supported this bill. So does that say, cousins, that None of the Republican cousins in the country want the $1,400 and the other benefits that I see that are, if you will, cousin-centric for the plan? I would dare say no. Surely they want the money, all right? There's going to be additional subscriptions to my understanding. And by the way, this is a 600-page bill, so have I read it? No. I've read a summary from some of the information that's on the descriptions in the, in the, uh, for this episode, okay? But some of the elements of it, to my understanding, is the $1,400 per individual and or some or married people, double that for a spouse if you, if you make below a certain amount of money, okay? 
there was going to be money for unemployment, like a chunk of money in order to continue the unemployment. Why? Because a number of cousins are still in hard shape. Unfortunately, cousins, as you look at it and I look at it, the COVID has had impact on us in different ways. If you were able to have a job that your job allowed you to be able to work at home online, then you're probably doing okay. If you had a chunk of money in the stock market and it went down last March, about the same time last year, but guess what? It recovered almost a 30%, that's three zero percent increase over the course of the year, you're okay. If you were in one of those jobs in which, hey cousins, we needed all those good cousins doing all those, what they call it, uh, required or, or necessary skill positions, okay, who may or may not have gotten increases, and all the cousins who lost their jobs in the hotels, in transportation, in restaurant, all those areas that we refer to as service. Why cousins? Because we're a service economy. They need help with unemployment all across the country. This is not a red state, blue state. It's not a Republican. It's not a Democrat. All the cousins need the help from the social for the unemployment. There was also money in this package in order to help the schools for assistance, in order to help them improve their ventilation systems and for, for petitioning, all that kind of stuff, so the kids can get back to school and start going regularly in person, which is what is key, with safety. Now, this could have been done before, but it wasn't. You tell me why. I don't know the answer, but there is one out there, isn't there? There's also going to be Paycheck Protection Program, which was highly successful in 2020 in order to help business keep some of their employees on the staff, i.e. the government helping businesses to maintain and keep the staff that they have. And from what I understand, all those Paycheck Protection Programs last year, even though they were, they were um, distributed uh, not quite as smooth as everybody might have liked, but they're being given grants so people don't have to pay them back. That's my understanding. Renters are getting some help, which helps who? Landlords, okay? Especially the small landlords and even some of the larger landlords. There's gonna be home energy and water support. Notice, notice the theme here, cousins. All these elements are helping the people, us, the US. The Affordable Care Act, remember that? It's getting some money injected to it. So think about this, cousin. As a result of COVID-19, we know that there are cousins who are having, even though they may have recovered from having the disease, they're getting long-term implications and physical implications or hurt, harm, based upon the COVID-19 bud. They're going to need insurance. Notice one of the elements, if you recall, the Affordable Care Act is it talked about having pre-existing conditions. What do you think insurance companies are going to say when you go up next year in 2022 and you tell them you had COVID? Is that going to be a pre-existing condition? Come on, cousins. Work with me now. All right? There's going to be a child tax credit. I don't have any children. There's going to be, for those cousins who have children, you're going to get a tax credit for some more money to help you pay, take care and pay for kids. Are kids any less expensive than they used to be? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to some buddies the other night, and they were talking about they've all had children, and I was talking about how much it might cost to uh, raise kids. And they told me, I don't have the slightest clue. The number I came up with so far off with how much it costs to raise a kid in this country. Hey, people need help. And the farther you go down socioeconomically, the more help you need. That's my contention. What do you think, cousins? You know, look around. And then the other part is that some of this money was going to be going for what? COVID-19 vaccine development and distribution. Because right now, cousins, we're all paying for this through our tax dollars. So it'll be all what? Get a chance to get vaccinated in order to be able to fight and finally beat COVID-19. And then the other fa factor from what I understand, cousins, is there was money in the bill in order to help the cities and states that may have been in the, in the unemployment, it may have been in the school assistance, it may have been somewhere in there, was going to help those various cities and states because why? They have had reduced revenue this year because businesses have been out, haven't been paying. We haven't been traveling, so all the people who get, make money from 
tourist things, tourist taxes like Florida, for example, and other states that rely on that sort of revenue to help balance out the budgets, they weren't receiving those dollars. So they're going to get some help. So bottom line, cousin, is that to my understanding, and let's also be honest and fair, there's no legislation that's 100%, right? I may have something in that legislation we just talked about I didn't like. There may be something else I wanted to have that I wanted to have in it that didn't get in. But on average, you start looking at this and saying, think about all those cousins who are going to be getting the money. So because no Republicans voted for it, does that mean that they don't care about their constituents who need the money? Does that say if you voted for those representatives, that when the check comes, you're going to send it back? No, you're not going to send that back. <laughs> you know that. None of us are going to send the check back. When was the last time you sent back a check that had your name on it? Probably never, right? Come on. So here's the point, cousins. I don't understand what the motivation was, but I suggest that we need to be, as an engaged democracy, we need to understand the considerations, we need to ask the questions, and we need to take action based upon, those act, based upon the answers to those questions. All those con congressional representatives are going to come back to you in two years from now and ask you for their vote. A number of those senators are going to come back and ask you for their vote. One of the questions you need to ask them is, why did you vote no when I may have needed some money or somebody else in my family needed some money and it was coming out and you said no? And by the way, cousins, when we get the money, what are we going to do? We're going to spend it. We're going to spend it with small businesses, hopefully, locally. We're going to spend it with larger businesses. And I bet you, I bet you, this is my understanding of it, that the economy is going to grow as a result of that money. We're not sending it overseas. It's not going into bank accounts. It's not going to investments. People are going to be spending that on things they need right now, to paying bills, buying food, buying the things we do, and perhaps even have a little bit of entertainment once we beat the COVID-19 virus. Right? Cousins, you need to ask the question because it's our country. The representatives work for us, and you tell me whether voting no represented you and what you wanted to have happen. Cousins, that's enough for today. Let me finish this drink with you. I want you to take care of yourself. Because I care about you, I want you to care about me. That's us, the United States of America. Wear your mask, get the vaccine. We'll see you next week on Brown Liquor and Bad Ideas. We are the people. We are the people. Bad, bad, bad.